Hello, I am Kimberly Adams, and welcome everyone back to Make Me Smart, where we make today make sense. It is Friday, May the 5th, also known as Cinco de Mayo. I'm Kyle Rizal. Thanks for joining us for a happy hour or economics on tap, as we like to call it. Today, we've got the YouTube live stream up and running. So if you're uh, mm -hmm. watching us or doing whatever, uh, we appreciate that. We had some technical glitches, but we're back now. Uh, anyway, also drinks the news fix. Uh, and Drew Jostad is in the house for a round of half full, half empty. Yes, indeed. And uh, sorry, uh, I can't believe that I didn't think about potentially using, you know, the day to get a theme drink, but whatever. Instead, my drink today is a, uh, I think, what did they call it? Something savage. I just had it up on the thing, but it was in the newsletter. But anyhow, uh, it's got vodka, lemon juice, um, lavender bitters and a sage syrup, uh, simple syrup that I made with the lavender from my garden, which you can see in my garnish. So, anyway, that's cool. It's fine. That's very cool. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, I'm doing uh, as doing? advertised in the newsletter. By the way, if you're into the bottom of the Make Me Smart newsletter, you saw what we were going to be having. Uh, I'm having Bunny with a chainsaw, which looks like this. <laughs> it's kind of amazing from Paperback Brewing. Uh, it's a nice hazy IPA, 8.2 percent alcohol by volume. It's uh, it's very tasty. Very tasty. Let us, uh, it is called, Debbie Donovan, yes, it is cold in Kai's shed. It's raining and 50-something degrees in Los Angeles today, so it's a little little tricky. Matthew Carroll's in St. Louis, just sucking up to you there, Kimberly. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I, I see that. I see that, and I appreciate yeah. it. I will take it. Um, yeah, my cocktail did turn out really nicely. So when I was making it, I felt like it was a little too lemony, and so I added more of the sage simple syrup to balance it out, but it turned out really nicely. I like it. Would make again. Mm. Excellent. So what's Excellent. everybody what drinking in the chats? Daniel Romay's got a Hoplust IPA out of Rockford, Michigan Brewing. I'd love to try that one. Sweet Rust Tennessee Twang Rye, straight up. Hmm. Interesting. Andrew in the Discord is having a non-alcoholic cocktail today, which has Seed Lip Garden 108, which is a non-alcoholic uh, liqueur. 23 Cherry Almond Simple Syrup topped with grapefruit sparkling water, which sounds really cool. Uh, that looks yeah, good. And Michael's Jacob, drinking Knob Creek Old Fashioned. There you go. There you go. Jacob H. wants to know if my nice cabled sweater is Icelandic. It is Target, actually, just for you. Ah. Nobody thinks I'm too damn fancy. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Uh, somebody Virginia in the Discord. In the Finger Lakes drinking leftover coffee. Sorry, go ahead. Nice, nice. Somebody in the Discord is asking about the hat that I referenced yesterday that I'm wearing to the steeplechase. And for just this reason, I brought the hat. Stand by. Oh, yeah. Wow, look at you. That's awesome. This That's is so the hat. Cool. It doesn't really fit over my headphones, but this will be my steeplechase hat. Pretty excited now, are about you wearing it. A, are you wearing a gown or a dress or what are you wearing? No, I've got this like big pink, long pink jacket that's sort of like meshy okay. and lacy thing. And it's going to be a whole right. like pink themed because clearly I can never let go of cherry blossoms. Are, are you, are you going to be in the stands or are you going to be on the infield? Because the infield gets all kind of muddy, you know. Uh, we are going to be tailgating uh, with the <laughs> tailgating people. So we will be outside. Okay, <laughs> well. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. No, it will be great. Me it's going to be super cool. The, the Gold Cup in Virginia yeah. is super fun. Super fun. Yeah. Uh, all right. Shall all right. we? Let's do some news. Yeah. You go first. Okay. Uh, mine is, uh, you know, spoiler alert, it's about the jobs report today. 253,000 new jobs. The unemployment rate ticks down to a 54-year low, matching a low of 3.4%. Um, Lots of good, and we can talk about interest rates and j -Pal and jobs and blah, blah, blah. But here's what I want to point out. Uh, people are back in this workforce. The share of people in the prime working years, which is 25 to 54 for some reason, uh, participating in the labor market is at 83%. <laughs> That's the most since 2008. I heard that chuckle, Kimberly Adams. Thank you very much. Here's the really interesting part about it and the really cool part about it. The rise has been powered by prime aged women, that is not a diamond joke, who are participating at a rate never seen before at 77.5%. That's really cool. That's really cool. Women are coming back in the workforce. They can get jobs. They want jobs. It lets them have um, financial means. It's really, really good. Now, there's no comment here on what kinds of jobs these are and some probably minimum wage jobs. But women coming back 
is driving the labor market, which is is huge. I've been thinking about this ever since we started discussing in the editorial meeting this morning, because remember the big messaging effort that the Federal Reserve Banks did early in the pandemic, talking about how they were going to withhold tightening the economy until they saw much right. better unemployment numbers for broader segments of the economy, including black unemployment, including women's unemployment. Mm -hmm. And then they had to kind of just like give up, right? Because right. the inflation was out of control and they're like, we can't wait until other folks wake up in order to, you know, do what we need to do with unemployment. And now we're starting to see that, you know, these jobs are catching up but just mm -hmm. as the tightening is happening and so mm -hmm. it's obviously a lagging indicator and i just wonder it, are we doing it and we're just as people start catching up the most vulnerable and the most left out of the economy right. do we then start pulling back sort of the things that helped people return to the economy right Absolutely. And look, Jay Powell says this. He said it in 2018 and 2019, right? We have to keep rates low because only now, 10 years into the expansion, the longest expansion on record, only then, to put it in contemporaneous terms, were the people at the bottom of the income spect spectrum and the most disadvantaged in this disadvantaged, excuse me, in this economy seeing the benefit. And let's see what happens, right? The the Fed's gonna either, you know, hold rates at five percent or raise them even more on today's report. And we're going to see what that does. Powell has said he wants to help. Sorry, I got a lot of dog in. Yeah, I was wondering about that. <laughs> yeah, that was Bob. Sorry. And here we go. She's in. She will proceed That's okay. That I'm sure anyway. we're going to sit from my other uh, house guest because I'm uh, cat sitting and he's a very vocal young man and heard, probably heard, going to bother him Jasper. I don't, I don't think... <laughs> yes. Yes, we, we, we haven't heard it today, but we definitely heard it yesterday. Oh, I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will. Yeah. Uh, okay, so my uh, make me smart uh, news fixes today have to do with weight loss. So news this week that Jenny Craig, uh, the weight loss oh, yeah. franchise, is going out of business. They're shutting down like all their franchises. And, you know, it's been four decades of this weight loss system. You remember all the mm -hmm. ads from the 90s and, you know, they were still going in some places. But financial news, uh, I think NBC first reported this, that, you know, they couldn't find a buyer, right? And why right. couldn't they find a buyer? Because who is losing weight that way these days when you have these new medicines you know, Wagovi and Ozempic and all of these things mm -hmm. that help people lose weight so quickly. Also, the medical profession is starting to treat obesity more like a disease than a moral failure, which That's is a point, right? good thing Huge. for sure. Yeah. But you have these drugs that are incredibly expensive. And mm -hmm. unless you've got good insurance or a lot of cash to burn, and even if you have good insurance, good luck getting it through your insurance company right. to it to you know lose weight. You know, I worry that we're entering this space where obesity becomes yet another marker of poverty. So on the podcast, uh, this is uncomfortable. Rima Crace uh, did a really amazing story once about how mm -hmm. in America, your teeth can really signal mm -hmm. how wealthy you are. Do you have money to mm -hmm. fix your teeth or not? And it's a signal of poverty. And now that basically, if you have enough cash, you can buy your way out of obesity. Is it going to become just sort of another marker of the haves and the have nots of our society because it's already mm -hmm. more expensive to buy healthy food than it is unhealthy food oh my gosh my computer is making all sorts of noises today i'm sorry this is like I don't, my I don't think we can, drama I think we're we're we're, we're kind of not really hearing anything weird just so you know okay good excellent it's yeah. just like a weird back feed um yeah. but you know I don't know. It, it's just like I'm glad there are now medicines and that the stigma is going away and that we are able to treat it like a disease and a genetic and a hereditary thing like it actually is. But on the other mm -hmm. hand, that these drugs are so inaccessible for so many people, I worry that we're just another way 
that, you know, we end up looking at someone and see an income, you know, stratification. So anyhow, right. the articles right. I no, linked really uh, were about, you know, who is Jenny Craig and the person herself and some of the things that she went through in her life as she created this empire. And then the other one is about how there's so much demand for the weight loss drugs that Novo Nordisk that makes Wagovi is actually starting to limit in the United States how much of the sort of first doses it will distribute because I guess the first dose is a smaller, um, you know, I don't know, dosage than the regular mm -hmm. thing, the regular shots. And so, mm -hmm. you know, they're limiting it to basically make sure people with diabetes can still get it. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, that's such a yeah. good point about about uh, as a mar obesity rather as a marker. That's mm -hmm. wow. All right, uh, that is the news. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to do half full and half empty. Okay, we are back, and this is half full, half empty, where we go through some of the news topics from the week and tell you how we're feeling about them. And a half full being that we're feeling mostly positive if we are willing to take a side, and half empty being the opposite <laughs> obviously and it is hosted by our very own drew jostad hello drew let us get to it hello the quote unquote godfather of ai has left google and has serious mm -hmm. concerns about the future of the technology are you half full or half empty on on what on him leaving on him having concerns or the future of the technology that's a that's a broad <laughs> question for a response you Mr. want Jostad. me to pick or you want to just have i want you to pick to... i want you to pick because because you know bridget and the producers of this podcast kind of left you high and dry pal so you decide <laughs> what the question is. how about how about you give me your view on the future of artificial intelligence then? okay 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 uh, i will do that i will also though first recommend to your attention a story that aired actually on marketplace this afternoon uh, uh mm -hmm. from matt levin about people who are anticipating that ai will change things so much in the short term that they are how they live their lives. It was totally interesting. Don't agree with everything that was said, but wow, it was fascinating. Um, am I sh so? Wait, Drew. The question again. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, so the this AI researcher has left Google right, with right, right. Comments about the future of AI. Right. Am right. I half full or half empty on the future of AI? Yeah. With I mean, if you if you think that he, that his leaving Google changes your opinion at all. Okay. Here's here's what I think. I think if we can be smart about this, which humans have not traditionally been able to do with technology, AI could change the way we live. I'm a little worried about the short term, and by short term, I mean like ten years, because uh, we we're not good at the adaptation of technology in beneficial ways in the short term. That's where I am. I am gonna co-sign on what Kai said. I'm a bit concerned about the short term. Uh, I want to be optimistic that in the long term, it's going to be positive, but, um, short term, not, not so half full, uh, more so half empty, but in the long term, I'm going to say half full. So fair enough. All right. Are you mm. half full or half empty on electric SUVs? All the way in, I drove one home and I've been driving one for two months. I'm all in. It's a crossover technically, but yeah, no, it's. If we can get electric right, and look, there are some real challenges, right? We need infrastructure, we need charging stations, we need, you know, battery manufacturing, all that jazz, but I'm, I'm demonstrably fully full. So this is from that story. I don't know if it was on your show on the morning show this week, uh, talking about how American batteries for EVs are bigger oh, yeah. than the batteries everywhere else oh, in the world. Yes, it was and on tech. It was on yeah, tech. It was on okay. Tech. Uh, yep. and, it was, and it was today, I think. Okay. And it uses up way more resources. They're heavier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it means that you end up having to use, like, the, the transition to electrifying. Mm -hmm, it's great. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. we use up so many more resources because we're making electric SUVs instead of, you know, convincing more people to take public transportation or, mm -hmm. you know, more e-scooters or e-bikes or smaller things that help people move through communities with less environmental impact. And so right. just getting everybody to, you know, drive 
an electric SUV is not going to help us all that much, uh, as much as changing the way that we live in communities and how we move around. And so uh, I'm going to go half empty on electric SUVs. I hadn't really yeah. thought about it until I heard that story on tech, but it, 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 it changed my mind about those. I'm going to go half empty. Yeah, look, I, I completely agree. And thank you for the clarification. It, it's really interesting because um, so when you get an EV, you learn you learn the vocabulary and the chemistry and the all this and that of charging the battery. Super quick story. So my car, which is Ionic 5, a Hyundai Ionic 5, has a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery. And it takes, you know, depending on where you are and what kind of charge you have. It can take anywhere from, if you go to a super fast charging station, it can get you to from 10% of battery to 80% of battery in half an hour right? Which is great. The Rivian truck, which is a much troubled EV startup, which makes obviously trucks and SUVs more to the point, has like 140 kilowatt hour battery. So give or take twice as much as mine. So can you imagine, number one, the time it takes, but also number two, the power suck that it is to charge that battery just because, and I realize I'm being a little pejorative here, we're Americans and we want big everything. Yep. Not to mention how much mm -hmm. lithium it needs. Right, yep. exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Anyway, yeah, really interesting. So yeah, I'm with Kimberly on this one. I, I am in my prior response. And it's worth going and listening to Megan's Pete, Megan's story. It really has some interesting points there that I, I absolutely hadn't considered. Yep. Yeah, it's a good piece. Okay. Half full or half empty on 2000s brands like Birkenstock and Victoria's Secret making a comeback. Oh, this was Kristen Schwab actually on Marketplace this week, and they're coming back. And she she did a piece about how it's it's hard work to get a brand back. Uh, yeah, Victoria's Secret too. They're like, wait, what? Uh, look, we are American consumers. We want what we want, and if brands have to work a little bit to get it to us, sure, I'm half full on that. I'm really torn here. Uh, so one of my jobs in college was actually working at a Victoria's Secret, and it was a great job and I loved my colleagues and it felt really nice to like have people come in and you make them feel really good about themselves and that was like a very sure. positive experience for um but the sort of what we know about Victoria's Secret corporate and the messaging and what that has done for uh the self-image of a lot of women and girls mm -hmm. is not mm -hmm. great I know that Victoria's Secret has done this big rebrand and tried to make themselves more inclusive and more casual and all that stuff. If if it's being done differently, then sure, get. But um, I don't know. I, I feel That's like fair. I would much rather see what interesting new things uh, like Gen Z and others could come up with and actually get supported and amplified than to sort of drag back the brands of our youth and just rehash them for nostalgia. Totally yes, fair. and someone in totally Discord fair. posted the the very funny song by an artist named Jax called Victoria's Secret, which is just an absolute takedown of the brand, and it's it's pretty funny. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next. Edge with Ed Sheeran cleared of copying Marvin Gaye's "Let's Get It On" this week. Are you half full or half? on music copyright hmm. i'm really torn on this one too because i know that some audio music people whose opinions i really respect and value felt that this case could be really dangerous for creativity in the music industry and you know having too many limits on how close songs can be to each other could be really dangerous for creativity. I get it. And I want artists to be able to like build off of other art. On the other hand, I don't like the idea of like Marvin Gaye losing anything, even though I know it's not him technically losing, but I don't know. I don't know. Abstain. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think uh, I think I'm half full on Sheeran being cleared for this reason. As I understand it, 
and I know nothing about music. Uh, this both songs were based on a relatively simple chord progression, that is the baseline mm. for a lot of songs. And if you want uh, music to thrive, you have to let relatively simple bass lines, as you were, not BSS mm -hmm. but BASE lines, right, um, be acceptable. So I'm I'm uh, I'm half full on sure and being cleared. Okay. All yeah, right. That's where I am. We got a poll. Oh yeah, do we? Let's Just see. Say it like me, it, Drew. We, we got a poll today. I don't know. Well, we, let's find we out. We're gonna do it now, anyway. All right. Yeah. Even All if right. we don't, let's do the poll. <laughs> okay. You All can right. share your thoughts with us, even if you don't get to click on anything. <laughs> that's right okay go okay are you half full or half empty on the coronation of king charles oh my oh my very good one so uh yeah yeah so we're doing a poll well doing apparently i have the hat for it as everyone has told me <laughs> you totally do you you could go to ascot the royal races you could go to the freaking coronation you could go you can go anywhere the funny thing is that this is not even the biggest hat that I own, nor is it my only really? big hat. Where do you <laughs> oh keep God, those I hats? Have, I have them hanging on a wall in my closet. I got all these like command hooks and then little um, clip hooks that go on the command hooks. And so I can hang them all flat against the wall. And some what, of them are in hat hook? boxes. What's a command <laughs> hook? It's the little it's hook so that like <laughs> adhesive sticks to the wall. Uh oh. <laughs> And and uh -huh. it, it lets you stick stuff on the wall without doing damage. Longtime renters are very familiar with command oh. hooks because it lets you hang oh. stuff on the wall without damaging it and losing. But you your own deposit. you own that place, right? You can put a new wall. Boom! I don't care. I live here. I own it. <laughs> this is true, but I rented for a very long time, and also um, I the sizes of the hats are weird, and I did not want to measure everything out perfectly, and so. I could just sort of stick them up there, and if it didn't fit right, I could just take it down and do it again until I got it right without, you know, a million holes in the wall. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. People are very uh, entertained that you didn't know what command hooks are. <laughs> what? Whatever. Oh, God. Look, I rented for a long time. I rented for a long time. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. let's, let's pile in on the answer to this one. They have had enough time. They have had enough time. I am half empty. I think we just need to let all this go. <laughs> it's just, mm -hmm. if I were a member of the British public, I would not want to be paying for this. Uh, I would be pissed if I were a member of the British public, much as were I a Canadian, I would be in favor of Quebec secession. That said, mm -hmm. I'm a history guy, and there ain't no history like the history of the British royal family. So while I will not up and at 2 a.m. Uh, West Coast time, I will stream part of it whenever I roll out of bed uh, and just check it out. Otherwise, I think the monarchy is anachronistic and and the British people ought to, you know, think about something else. That's where I am. Okay. All right, let's see. What does the That's poll where say? I am. What does the poll uh, have to say? 77% half empty, 22% wow. half full. So uh, I guess others are in line with our thoughts on this. I, I, I do wonder, you know, my, my, my general sense of all the coverage is that the British population is relatively along those lines. They're like, yeah, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. only few are strongly in favor. Also, by the way, there are 220 <laughs> people on the stream and only 132 of you voted. So I don't know what y'all are doing here, but For come shame. on, man. Come so on. somebody in the YouTube chat who's, Dag Gnome, I guess, is the username, said, we do something like this every four years. It's not entirely different. It's completely different. Same It's one. completely different. Well, sure. So there will be a part of the ceremony in Westminster tomorrow in which Charles Windsor, which is his name, will be hidden behind a screen and did by the Archbishop of Canterbury with oil that was... Uh, uh, blessed in Jerusalem. Okay. He will then, he will have ridden to and from uh, the coronation ceremony uh, in coaches of state, which are worth, my general guess would be some multiple 
of the average British person's annual salary. For um, sure. And then he will go back to Buckingham Palace and do what? We have every, every four years, and look, I, I appreciate the symbolism and the history and the this and the that, but the difference between whatever it is that's going to happen in Westminster tomorrow, which I will watch part of because I dig history, is not mm -hmm. the same as a democratically elected leader in front of the population swearing to preserve, protect, and uphold the Constitution of the United States, taking a walk down Pennsylvania Avenue, which, yes, is a parade, and which, yes, is, I guess, randomly ceremonial, and let's not get started on the imperial presidency. But then when he gets to the White House, he literally goes to work. Or maybe yep. next, you know, next election, she literally goes to work, right? So not the same. Okay. That's my rant. That was a good rant. It was a good rant. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, that was an excellent rant. <laughs> I think that's a good place to go. end, too. No, I mean. You, you do it. Take it. I don't have much to add. I'm, I, I agree. I agree. All right. That is, uh, that is okay. it for us today after the rant. Yes. We're back next week. Questions, comments. Uh, make me smart uh, at marketplace.org. Also, marketplace bingo suggestion. We could use those. We'll use them mm -hmm. somehow in a fundraiser or some kind of game that we'll do at some point. Five of you be smart. Email works as well. Make me smart at marketplace.org. <laughs> o R N G. <laughs> and A N D and so for sure as hell somebody's going to go O R N G. That's not going to work. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> Make Me Smart is produced by Courtney Bergseeker. Today's episode was engineered by Charlton Thorpe. The audio problems were my fault, not his. Drew Jostad wrote the theme music to Half Full, Half Empty, and Antonio Barreras is... Rosenberg, I'm Emily, McC Emily McCune. God, Kai and Antoinette <laughs> are the team behind our Friday game. Marissa Cabrera is in charge of this podcast. Bridget Botter is in charge of... And Francesca Levy, the director of Digital and On Demand. Oh, my God. God. They gave you the short ending. That's not your fault. I know, right? You're like, you guys. <laughs>